it's funny because I I knew I knew Waller would have a big game because that that guy's legit. He's a really good tight end, young tight end. He's he's super athletic. He, he's he's legit. Um, but even like a guy like um, Moreau, I'd actually considered even just because I figured that was the kind of game plan that they that the Raiders were going to use. Just and carrier, all three tight ends you know? were used. Yeah, all of them exactly. So. You know, I kind of, I kind of had a sneaky suspicion that's the same type of plan because they had Josh Jacobs at running back, who's he's he's a stud. Um, that that's be, that would be the way that they would attack this defense. Apparently, that is what works. Uh, so there's definitely a blueprint out there. I feel like, and um, that's going to be something that'll be interesting to see if if Petten moving forward, you know, makes some adjustments because there's going to need to be some self scouting going on. Um, because that's that's two teams that have run something I think pretty similar and they've had you know some pretty good success. I mean, if you if Carr doesn't fumble that football, you know, at the pylon as he's you know going out of bounds. Or Thank whatever, you, Blake you know, Martinez. That well, yeah, that 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 could be a different ball game there, you know. And then same thing with the the fourth down stop at the goal line, the interception in the end zone. You know, you know, give credit to the defense for making the plays, you know, for being say, there but to you. Isn't that the difference between what we've lived with before and what a defense that averages less than what's considered elite point totals per game is those moments. They don't give up the touchdown and those moments they make the play. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but every defense has something they're going to allow because they're shutting everything else down. And like I said, if you look at before Darnell Savage left, they would they were always allowed the run until it's a critical moment when they know they have to run and then it seems to be they make the play. But yep. before Savage was there, they weren't allowing these big plays. I think before Savage were all, I think they'd allowed all of two plays that were 25 yards or more. Everything else was in front of them, and it was these force them into long drives, and they were getting several sacks, several turnovers per game. I, I just think that I understand we're analyzing. You have to do that. But every defense, when you look at it, it's giving up something. Patton is going to say, go ahead, run the ball, because eventually our offense is doing what they're doing, and they're going to put you in situations where you have to pass it no matter what, or you're in a situation where we can load up and know you're going to run it like the goal line situation, and I'm trusting our guys are going to make those plays. And the Packers' defense, give them credit, over these first seven games have really showed, other than that blip there, and we can you know say there's a few things that were reasons there too, they've shown they can do it, and they deliver. So I guess that's my Yeah, opinion. it's got a – it's it's got a little bit of a feel. I don't, I'm not going to compare them directly because there were some pretty dang good players, Hall of Fame type quality potentially players on that 2010 Packers defense. Yes, but it's but there's a similar feel in the fact that they'll bend and not break. They'll give up the yards, but when they need to make the plays and get the big turnovers in the big spots, they do it. And and so far that's how they've played. And that's how that defense in 2010 was playing down the stretch, the second half of that year. So it's got to me that same kind of feel. And if, if, as long as they win, I mean, that's why last week's win was so huge. And the fact that they lost the turnover turnover battle pretty badly and they still won that game. But if you, if, if you get continue to get turnovers with the way now this offense is starting to click and give, Rodgers the ball that many more times and keep points off the board the way they have they've done a good job of keeping the points off the board and that's what matters the most it doesn't I could care less about the yards I hate how they rank defenses based on total yards the points to me is what it is is what matters points and 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 so eliminating hey 24 what's the magic number Jay for points right so 24. And the last That's touchdown was garbage 24. time, too. Yeah. Mostly yeah, that it was 17 garbage. points until after the 19 but seconds. What, what it was, though, is what I said less than 24 is because for the season, they be, going into this game, they were at, I think, 19.1 or something like that per game. And yeah. And then they gave up 24. So at this point, they're still averaging less than 24 points given up per game on the season. I, like, yeah. 
and the offense is only getting better. And let's be real here. NVS is getting more comfortable. He had two catches, and one went for a 74-yard touchdown. Big play and the other, They were receiver. both big plays. That's his role, and he's delivering. Lazard and Kumaro came in on the underneath. They, like you just said, they found the ability to not – do you know how many times Jones and Williams were on the field at the same time, and they were both catching the ball? It's just this offense – and the problem I'm still hearing, Ryan and Dave, I'm still hearing it when I'm I'm listening to other podcasts and national people, as good as they all are, they're still not giving credit to the fact that this system isn't one player dependent. It will look at what it has. Because they're and, scared of it. They don't want to admit it. Because they were wrong. Because no matter like no matter what happens the rest of the season, Matt LaFleur has proven that he has the ability to be a coach, coach Aaron Rodgers, and have this team be a quality Super Bowl playoff contending team for the next several years with Aaron Rodgers. I think he's proven that already. I, I, I mean, and that's the problem why nobody is, everybody's trying to talk about Rodgers or individual performances, but they want to sweep everything else under the rug. They were dead wrong. Packers, Packers people we love that are part of our family. They were dead wrong. They had us going at 1-3, one 1-4 and three, one and four to start out the season, Ryan. And I know you remember hearing that because I know you listen to most Packers podcasts. And, yeah, um, Unknown Packers podcast I think was one of them. Um, what was the other one? Uh, the big one. All the Pack-A-Day podcast people, like all of yes. them. Yes. Meg all of Looney, them. All of them. And we love Not calling them all, you out, folks. Just, just it's, it's what you what said, and you, you disagreed with all three of us. But uh, no, no, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to Mr. Jair Alexander. I know he had a couple plays where he got uh, beat on some routes, but he made probably one of the bigger game-saving plays. He's the one who spun Josh Jacobs around mid-air to get that ball away from the goal line on fourth and goal. If he didn't hit him, he wouldn't have spun, and he had a chance to reach out that ball. And then Good- Jerry Alexander Goodson made did a hell finish of a him off to keep him from... Yes, he did. Good- so but it was- Jair made that initial helicopter Oh, spin. yeah. No, no. It was a great play. Uh, good good team effort. By the way, yeah, B.J. Yeah. Goodson, yeah. underrated trade. Look how he's doing. Yeah, I mean, he's... Yeah, he's been all right. Um, he does what he's supposed to do. His job is to be the thumper. You know, he's 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 supposed to help fill gaps in the run game, which, I, I mean, you can argue if that's happened or not, I guess, um, without really watching that as closely to know if that's Martinez or if that's Goodson or who it is on the field that, you know, is, if, if every time they're a chunk play on the run game, you know, I, I need to rewatch and see kind of what happened there. But um, I mean, for, for a guy that we got late, like at the end of training camp, you know, usually those guys don't do much, but I, I mean, think he's, he's been all they right. They said he was traded for coverage on tight ends. And I think that's why they had him on the field so much is because of, Oakland's usage of tight ends and when they had three of them on it's just man it just spread our defense out it, it really did and I mean that's the thing it was really a lot with Moreau, of those open Kier, tight ends and were busted coverage from the safety position you could tell that right away and they even <clears> talked <throat> about it again it comes back to not having Savage back there that is shown yeah he's not going to give up those plays already as a rookie he's just not and so so a lot of those big plays, then does that really that it puts you in different downs and distance? It just changes the game. It it changes what the defense is able to do. There were so many confusions on when they hurried up to the line of scrimmage, and then you know had a lot of time on the clock, and they kind of seen what the defense was doing, and they were communicating, and you seen a lot between Redmond and Amos trying to tell Redmond what to do. There was even one to Waller that went for a touchdown where Redmond and Amos are running down the field, and Amos turns around and points at Redmond like, get that guy, nobody's on him, and Redmond fails to do it, catch TD. So, 
I, I'm not going to get too upset, I guess. I mean, that that's where losing not just Savage, but also Raven Green has come in. You know, that was that was a position in, that Dave's going to about to say Ibrahim Campbell. Bingo, Ibrahim Campbell. Um, yeah. Safety depth. He's played in Petten System. He did well in it last year. I love him coming back. It, it, I think he comes back and starts over Redmond, in my opinion. Campbell really did well in coverage last year when he was in. He just got hurt, unfortunately. But if he's back, and then also to think where he, <laughs> if we're getting Jay Sternberger back next week because he was a full participant in practice all last week. So we could have another weapon to use on top of Adams possibly coming back next week. Yeah, I'm curious to see how both of those guys come back. You know, I yeah, I, I agree. Campbell was pretty solid down the stretch last year, but he hasn't played. So I'm curious to see how he does. There's going to be some rust, I feel, but Agreed. hopefully he can he can bring bring what he was bringing to the team last year, and then being obviously comfortable in that same defense. So um, as far as the Sternberg thing, I mean. Putting him on the, on the field, he is by far going to be their most athletic tight end at this point. <laughs> so over Graham and Lewis, yeah, they're senior citizens in that kind of group. So yeah, yeah, just being able to actually have that kind of size and speed to go down the seam, I think that could be huge. I obviously I have zero idea how he's been doing in terms of just picking up the offense, the training, you know, the the playbook and everything. I, I, he's been out. So it's hard to say how he's going to do there. That's like they've always said that tight end position as a rookie is always the hardest to to break in in in, in your first you know year or even two. I mm-hmm. believe, but just the fact that he... honestly, just just real quick thought because I want to get your opinion on this, Ryan. Yeah. What would you think okay. if I were to say that I believe that his being hurt and being able to learn and digest without getting on the field and making mistakes and seeing film and digest things and learn slower, he's going to be able to go over things and ask questions and all that. I think it's actually going to be beneficial to a young guy at a tough position, like you were just saying, to be able to have this benefit of doing a lot more classroom and learning. And as he's rehabbing and kind of seeing and asking and watching, I think it's going to make a big difference for this kid and the fact that he's still, when he comes back, it's still going to be third or fourth on the depth chart. What do you think about that, Ryan? That's, I don't know. That's tough. I feel like a lot of, I guess it depends how people learn. Everyone's learning style is different. For me, I'm a doer. I need to actually be on the field or you know if i'm at work i need to be actually doing it myself not just reading about it or hearing it from someone else but i don't know what he's like you know that's just my opinion as far as like trying to learn something but i mean i can understand where you're coming from in terms of the time commitment you know he's he's got nothing else to do other than just really learn as much as he possibly can assuming that he's that type of you know hard worker type of player which i think he is um but even even that said, even if it's even if he doesn't have the full grasp of everything, being able to get him out on the field periodically, I don't expect him to be t- you know thrown in there and playing all the snaps. Obviously not. But being able to put him out there as a mismatch here and there when they're not expecting it, and being able to have that kind of athleticism and that kind of size, I think that that could be a huge you know, bonus for this offense, which already is starting to click and looking good. You start throwing in athletic tight end that can, he's got some really good hands. I really like Sternberger a lot. I think his long-term, you know, potential and future, I think he's tight end one eventually. It's just going to take some time. But, you know, in the meantime, I think he can be that bonus tight end, you know, that, that we just, we don't have that on the roster right now in terms of that athleticism. So, and then once you get, you know, big Bob Tanyan back again, add another guy in there that, you know, again, I th- he, he's not as athletic as Sternberger, but he's pretty athletic. You know, I hate to say he's sneaky athletic because that's so cliche, but he kind of is, and he's got decent hands too. So, you know, getting, getting both of those guys, you know, mixing it up with them on the field, I think it's going to bode really well for this offense you know, moving forward, which already is starting to really gel. So even if it's a little bit that he's, you know, he's not out there a lot, I think his return is, is going to be a um, big bonus for sure. 
Can I can I also just bring up this fact too of that